Okay, can you can be seated? Uh, I I uh, live in Florida. I have not worked in a year, so you're going to get it, guys. Okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll tell my testimony tonight. We're going to have miracles tonight, Pastor. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of miracles. So if you're sick or know anybody's sick, bring them. You're going to get some miracles. Amen, right? Okay, first of all, you're, usually what I do, I give some scriptures. So you'll have it for you and on the, the mat. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, they better, huh? And I'll give you your Bible scriptures. And then I'll tell you exactly what I, a lot of what I saw. I was taken by Jesus himself for 40 nights, 30 nights into hell, three hours a night, and walked among the dead. It was in 1976, 42 years ago. And I was a young housewife and a mother, and Jesus Christ himself came to me. Like, like you, I could reach out and touch him. And he looks a lot like uh, the carpenter, the picture with the hair and the mustache and the beard, kind of like you got the little beard. And he is about six, uh, he's about six foot three, and he looks like a weightlifter. And out of him came rainbow lights, rainbows. Yes, precious, precious. And all you want to do is bow and worship him and thank him for just being there, you know. And uh, his love just overwhelms you. And my husband was asleep. He didn't even wake up. And the whole room filled up with glory. And above my ceiling was a white, big round circle like a hole. And the light came down, and he came down in the light. And he walked out of the light, and he reached his hand out to me, and he says, Come. He said, My father's spoken. You've been chosen to go into to hell with me. And said, I'm going to take you three hours a night, and I'm going to show you the abode of the dead. He said, I'll bring you back at five. And he said, I'm going to take you at two. And he said, What you see will always be with you, and you will write a book, and you will do a movie in the future of this. And this is what he gave me, almost word for word, years ago. And this is in about 130 languages in the world. He's been, he blessed it. So, so what you have to realize, uh, prophets and apostles, pastor, told me my calling. When I was raised in church on a farm and with my dad and mom in Tennessee, but we always went to church, church all the time. So as a little girl, I was prophesied to. And God spoke all to me when I was about seven years old, swinging. And he said, your, na uh, your name should be a household name. And I run in and ask my mother what that meant. And she told me, she said, I want you to be a good little girl because you see this stove I'm cooking on, an old stove, you know, the flames come up around the skillet, an old-timey cook stove. She said, you be a good little girl because you could go to that place if you don't. I said, okay, Mama, I'll listen to you. <laughs> and we were raised in church into love and fear of the Lord. We really, really were. And so... All my life, I've been feel, feel real close to the Lord and pray and repent if I did anything wrong, you know. But today we're going to talk about a place nobody wants to go to, ever, ever, ever. Not your worst enemy. And I will tell you as a key before we get started. While I'm talking today, if you have any ought or hatred towards anybody, you better repent. You will not go to heaven with hatred in your heart. You must forget Jesus said, if you do not forgive, the Heavenly Father cannot forgive us. So then we stand in judgment. It, it's a really real teaching because I saw so many burning for unforgiveness. So I'm going to give you the scriptures in St. Luke real quick. St. Luke chapter 16 verse 19 about the rich man and Lazarus. And we're going to, just a second, we're going to understand going to understand how you can see in hell, talk in hell, and remember your family while you're burning in hell. Did anybody ever think about that? Well, I'm going to explain it to you. And I saw them. Now, hell is a place that's in the middle of the earth, and they are sections and sections of different degrees of fire, sweetheart. Like your section over here, the fire could be 50 degrees hotter than theirs or a river of fire, or there's fires 
like mountains of fires. And at the top of some of these mountains are demons that have your na- have a list of your names, how they deceived you. And they throw, throw people into fires. I'm serious. It's, it's very, very real. And none of us are going to go there. None of your children, your grandchildren. It's, yes, none. Absolutely nobody. We're going to have nobody go to hell. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's praise him a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Let's thank him. Father, we just come to you this morning. Whoa, glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, the Messiah, I tell Holy God. Whoo, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes, he said, I have come, said the Holy Ghost, to show you and said, tell you the truth, that I can be closer to me than you ever were, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. St. Luke chapter 16, verse 19 says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple, fine linen. Otherwise, he was wealthy. He didn't have to worry about money like we do or anything like that. And then there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. If you've ever been to Jerusalem, you'll see the mansions with the big gates and everywhere. But the dogs came, okay, and licked his sores. And it says, chapter 21, and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Now, as time goes on, the beggar died and was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man died and he was buried. Okay? Now, let's look here. This is Jesus teaching. Verse 24. 23. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. How could a dead man see? You want to know? I'm going to tell you. And in torments, and look, he's seeing Abraham. How could he see and recognize Abraham? Because there was a boat that was Abraham's bosom close to hell, right, Pastor, at that time. So evidently, Abraham had a human body, right, guys? He had to or he wouldn't have recognized his spirit. So you think about this wisdom that God has given us here. And seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So the poor man made it to heaven, right? He did. And Abraham's bosom was a place, sweetheart, that God prepared till Jesus Christ went to the cross and shed his blood to redeem them, you know, and transfer those to heaven in Abraham's bosom. That's a whole new teaching. But, but we, yeah, the blood of Jesus had to be shed. And our Savior, darling, did that for us, didn't he? Have life eternal. Hallelujah. And, and, and listen, he had a voice. How could he talk? And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Look at this. Oh, my God. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Okay, he felt like he had a body, didn't he, guys? He felt like he had a, a tongue. So let's think about this. And the scripture said, fear God who can cast both soul and body into hell. And that's what I understood in a minute. I'll explain it to you. When I first saw the dead, what they look like. Excuse me. But Abraham said, son, remember, okay? He had his brain in hell. He was not crazy. He said, remember. That in your lifetime you received good things and Lazarus likewise evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. Now this is the Bible. This is Jesus. And then he talks about a gulf in between them. And then he, verse 27, this man prays out of hell for his family. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, oh my God, that thou would send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. When, when Christ appeared to me, I was saved and had the Holy Ghost. We had a wonderful church all our family went to in Michigan. And uh, we'd been having prayer meetings. We had been having a lot of people come to our home, and supernatural acts would happen. 
And so the night Christ appeared to me, I was awake because I would go to, after our children went to bed and I would pray because I loved it. And what happened when Christ came down that beam of light and spoke to me, I was wide awake. But when he stretched his hand out and he said, come with me, my body laid on the bed like it was asleep. But my spirit, so so come out of my body. It was a shape, it was a white glory, like a negative on a film. But I could see, I could talk, I had my senses. And I said to the Lord, I said, Jesus, uh, um, it kind of scared me, you know. And he said, your body will be safe. There was angels all around it. And angels all, I could see with these eyes. We had a basement with children in it. There were seven children. And in the basement, angels was by three by every child. Yeah, and watching over them. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, come, fear not, they'll be safe. And so he raised his hand and he took, my, he took me by his right hand, he took my left hand. And we went way up into the sky. We went so high up. But he stopped above my home and all around my home was the scripture, Psalms 91, coming down in a, a flag light with red, with gold on it, uh, Psalms, out of the Bible. They were suspended in the air around my home. And around my home were three ranks of angels. These are scriptures. There was little angels like playing for real. Then there was another one. <clears throat> angels. You guys believe this? Yeah. These angels were so, how could I describe it? Where's a tall man, you? Yeah, you tall. Stand up, honey. They were like two foot taller than him and had big, big, they had different kind of wings. And then the next rank were, were uh, how tall were they? 20 feet tall with swords of fire, fire. And Jesus said, these are the warfare and angels. And their wings would go out and go wingtip to wingtip. And any darkness come in our home, that would roll back and, and fire would burn them up. The fire was from the swords. So that's Bible. God protects us. And you got to remember that, okay? He said that he would be a wall of fire round about us and the glory in the midst. you got to believe the word of God, sweetie. The word will work every time. Every time. Amen. And so Jesus said to me, he said, come in here. Here's what he said. And come and see what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And he said, child, what I'm going to show you will shake the nations. And he said, it's a plan of my Father that many be saved and come unto me. Many. And he said, uh, I'm going to take you three hours a night into the middle of the earth where hell is. And in the middle of the night, he said, upon the earth... It is different sections of the earth, you know, the time zones. But he said, now when we go down this gateway into hell, you will hear demons, you will hear uh, sounds of the people that have died like the rich man. You will hear uh, the moans and regrets that they don't want to be here. And he said, I'll strengthen you and I'll prepare you. And he said, we'll go through, he told me, brother, he said, first we're going to go through a tunnel into hell. And he said, you're going to see fires high as buildings. And he said, you're going to see skeletons in the fire screaming, let me out, let me out. And then he said, you're going to see worms crawling on these souls and I'm pulling them out. He said, this is not a game. This is real. This is the judgment of my father upon souls that have rejected the blood of Jesus Christ and, and me as Savior of the world. Now, he said there's sections you won't understand. I will not explain it to you. But he said there's other people. Now, Pastor, he told me that children, no babies in hell, absolutely none. None that's never, never, no abortions, nothing. All those babies go to heaven and God finishes them. Uh, he said there are people in hell that were, I mean, that are mental. They do not go to hell, he said. Please give people wisdom because of God's mercy and grace. Uh, he said, the mentally challenged do not go to hell. So I want you to know that. that uh, please listen to me because Jesus told me that. Because I asked him a lot of questions. Because I wanted to know, you know. And he said, child, he said, what you're going to see, you will write in a book. And I will make it go all over the world. 
And he said, the day will come when you'll do a movie of this book to save millions. And he said to me, there is a season and a time when my father drops revelations upon people. There's an hourglass that comes my father's hand and he will drop revelations on it. Now, if you're a seer and you have part of a, a prophecy or part of a vision, you need to get with your pastor that believes in you and have him lay hands on you and pray for you to clear the mess up. Hear me? It's very important to have clarity when Jesus shows you something. Because a lot of people go half off and they really have a gift, but they never get it straight. But what God did with me, he explained things to me, told me my family be safe. He showed me mighty angels, and I felt secure with him. So we went into the sky, and he's in the human form on all these places. And he said, now, over here, I want you to look. There was a round thing like a spinning top, but it was hollow, 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 hollow. And I looked down, it was like a tunnel. He said, you're going to go down the tunnel with me, and we're going to go to the bottom, and it'll be the, the base of where we're going to walk. I said, okay. And so we began to go down this tunnel, and you could hear demons screaming in the wall. But there was a gray mesh that held them away from, from us, from us. But the further that I went, the hotter it got, and the more human voices I heard. Human screaming, help me. Nobody loves me. Why didn't somebody warn me about hell? And the further you go down, Jesus started crying. And we stopped on this dirt ground. It was children. It was like kind of fight wide like these chairs are. And over here was a black thing crawling. And over here was another big old thing. And I screamed and pulled on his hand. And then he said, come, come a little further. So we went like 20 feet and fire, fires like you've never seen, were coming up on the sides, on each side. And in every fire was skeletons standing in a line 20 that had just died on the earth. And they were screaming and burning. They were skeletons full of dead man's bones. They had no hair, no blood, no organs. But inside their bones was a vapor of smoke that was their soul. That's, that's what Jesus said. And he started, I looked down at Christ's feet, and I could hear the screams of the dead on this side and those evil things. And I was so afraid. And at the top, the doors opened and demons flew out. I said, Jesus, what are they doing? He said, they're going to the earth to torment people that don't know me. I said, Jesus, can't you stop it? He looked at me, and blood started coming out of his hands and out of his feet. And it, like the thorns in his head. And I just screamed. He said, I paid a high price so people wouldn't come here. He said, I, I gave my life. And he said, you're going to hear conversations like on the earth when you ask somebody to come to church with you. You're going to hear the rebellion. And they don't want to listen. And he said, I proved to the world who I was. Who I feel the Holy Spirit sister, don't you? And so we kept, it's hard for me to tell it sometimes. So we kept walking and we came to a place. He said, you stand here. It was fires and smoke as far as I could see. It was dark cliffs with rocks hanging down. But out in the front was flat ground. But there was rock like where the volcano had run. Volcano liquid. But there were holes dug about, a, oh, I guess, 2,000 holes dug in the ground. And every hole was a skeleton. And the fire was around them in red-hot rocks. And they would scream like the rich man. And they could talk and they could turn. And I looked at him. I stood where he told me. So he went at about 20 feet and raised his hands and spoke in tongues. And when he spoke in tongues, hell shook. Oh, hell shook. And all the fires in the pits died down to their ankles. And I was so scared, afraid. And he come back and he got me, took me by the hand. He said, I want you to listen to them. And we began to walk down this pathway. And hands would reach out. And they would want, um, can you come and open that for me, baby? Her. Hands would reach out of the, the pits. And they would want to uh, pull.
pull on you or talk to you. And they would have just, it's hard to open it, honey. Thank you, baby. But they would have, well, they don't have no water in hell, believe me. They cry for water. <laughs> People, it's serious. They don't, they don't have any. They cry for a drop of water. And, and what happened to, to these hands, the flames would come up, and then you would look and see worms, wormholes, and they would pull the worms out. And the fire wouldn't burn the worms all through them. And you would see their flesh grow up around their feet, like rotten flesh, smells horrible. And it would come up over their heads, and it would melt off. And they'd be, their bones would be dry again over and over and over and I'm screaming and Christ is talking to me and I calm down he says peace be still and when he done that I would calm down because it terrified me and I thought if I had not come back to the Lord when I was backslid I would be there I thought of that that could be me in that hole you know and it makes you think it makes you think hard and the more you walk among the dead and listen to their stories like one woman we came up to a skeleton and she said Jesus I repent now can you forgive me now and he said woman what are you here for she said well I went to church just to get men I didn't go to hear the worship I, I was a really went to, to break up marriages and get men she said that and I, when she did that the fire would rose up, rise up to her chest and Jesus said, didn't you hear the message? Didn't you hear to repent if you were lustful? Didn't you hear the message of the church? Pastor, she said, yes, but I figured I had tomorrow. I could repent. I figured I could take my time. And she said, then one day I was killed in a car wreck and ended up here. And the Lord said, it's too late. My, the Father's judgment's been set. And it'd be person after person. Uh, one man had a make-believe Bible. It was back, maybe we'd been down there like two hours. We walked ever among these skeletons and they would cry. No tears came and begged to get out. And we came to a tall man. He was engulfed in fire and it wouldn't die down. I said, what has he done, Lord? He said, he used to be a preacher of my word. I said, he did mm. I just feel the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I said, God, what do you mean? He said he, he, he had prejudice in his heart. <clears throat> he said nobody except his nationality is going to heaven. He said he was critical and mean. And said he, uh, <clears throat> thank you, Lord. Let me tell you what happened to this man. He was in Detroit. That's where he told me. And I remember him years ago. It was, yeah, come here, Marisol. Come here, open it. He said, I, I was in Detroit, and there was a pastor there very prejudiced. He hated anybody with different type of nationality. Uh, so he preached it to the people that they were the only people going to heaven, the rest of us going to hell. And Jesus told him, he walked over to him and said, oh, man, he said, do you realize what you've done? He, so he said, yes, I do. He said, I was wrong. Will you forgive me? I had hatred in my heart. And he, he began to quote the Bible, a fiery book in hell. And Jesus said, peace be still, oh man. He said, you're still lying. You're still, still doing wicked things, thanking him. And the man began to curse the Lord as we walked by. And I, I said, Lord, how in the world can anyone be so wicked and burn and like that and still blaspheme you? And he gave me scriptures, Bible scriptures. And we kept walking. And he said to me, come, I want to show you something in the middle of the earth. And I want to show you jail cells. So we went to the middle of this circle of all this evil. 17 miles of jail cells straight up. 17 miles. With little dirt paths like four foot in front of each jail cell in a circle. High as you could see. He said, now at the very top. He said, there's souls of witches and warlocks. 
that wouldn't repent. It said ever so often Satan appears here and burns them with fire because they followed him. And he said, this is your kingdom hell. And he said, the next level, he said, there's souls up there that when Moses was on the earth. Believe, think about this. Years and years. And he said, as you, as we go up there and I talk to these people, souls, he said, missionaries came to some of them. Some of them I visited, he said. He did. But he said they wouldn't listen, they wouldn't hear. And I stood with him and I looked up and then I heard a noise and looked over there, a lot of noises, but it was a man in a coffin. Excuse me, please. This man in the coffin was screaming and Jesus said, come, I want to show you the blood on his hands. I said, oh my God, what has he done? And Jesus said, come in here, come and see and come and listen. He said, in the future, when you preach this gospel, you listen to me and you don't, don't ever, he said, do what I'm showing you these other people did. He said, you better repent if you do, because the enemy would love to deceive. So I said, okay, Lord. And, we, and he said, if you're innocent and you sin, it's different. If you deliberately premeditate to destroy somebody's life, it's wrong, really wrong. It's wicked. And so what happened when I saw this man in the coffin, he was on his back, it was a skeleton, and uh, there was real blood on his hands, he was on his back. Screaming, his voice was so loud, it echoed up through the chambers of hell. High pitch voice. And a few years ago, they, they drilled into hell overseas, right, brother? And they heard these voices. And uh, this man's voice, and Jesus walked over to him and said, Peace be still. And the man looked at him and he said, Lord, I thought I had tomorrow. I thought, God, that I would be all right. But he said, I sinned. I lied to the people. I took their money. I didn't care about their soul. And Jesus said, uh, you were told by prophets to repent. You were told. He said, I visit you myself. And he talked to the Lord, and, and what happened, the Lord said he had a big, fine church, uh, several cars, and he was so blessed and everything. But he turned, and the devil came and got in his heart and made him preach heretic gospel, a heretic, like watered down God's word, used lies, teaching the people. And uh, he said, I warned you myself. And one day he was killed, and his came, soul came to hell. And round his coffin was little slots like that. I'm telling you, it's enough to scare any preacher, anybody. And the slots had spears that the demons were three foot high would stab him 24 hours a day. Because, and he felt it like he had a real body. So the judgment of God is severe. Uh, see, God gave his son, his only son for us, that we would never have to go to this place. Never have to go there. And we got it all. It is so easy. Just be real with God. Don't play games with God. Just love him and say, God, I goofed. I had a bad day, Lord. I, I mean, I did it today. I, I said things I shouldn't. People run me off the road. See, we're normal. We're humans. But when we try to cover up all this junk, it don't number weigh you down, you know, burn you. But God said, if, if you have to repent one man, what do you tell him? 75 times a day? <laughs> How many's done that? Amen. So he wants you to know he's not going to squash us. He's not going to destroy us. He loves us. He gives you time to grow like a baby, like your children. He is God. He's awesome God. Awesome God. And what I learned was his love, too. He kept saying I, he, to him, if you'd only listen, he would cry. And so we went, we left from there and went up a mountain of, it was smoke, it was black, it was dark, and down below was fire in a valley, so much fire and skeletons by the thousands burning and burning. And he said, that's Hitler's army. They had tattered uniforms on. And I said, God, he said, come, I want to show you something else. F we went further, and there over on the other side of this old, dark, ugly, dingy place and smells of, of dung, the toilets come down into hell. Rats are in hell. 
Snakes are in hell. It stinks. Uh, you could smell odors like plastic burning. You could smell their bones on fire. It's awful. You can hardly breathe. The air is real tight in hell. And uh, you keep walking, and you, I, I said, Jesus, I am so scared. So we sat down on a rock, and I looked down at his feet, and again they opened up the wounds, and the blood came out. And on his arms, it comes on the palm and the wrist. It would come out. And he would, he would say, I died for all of these. And he said, you're going to help me. You're going to tell people the truth. And I'm going to raise up others to see hell. Now, you guys can laugh all you want, but a few years ago, I went to a church, and this man came, and he had saw hell. Pastor, he wanted to tell people on my, in my service, and God said to me, he's a chicken. I said, what, God? He said, he's a chicken. I said, ask him how many years ago I showed him hell. I said, sir, how many years ago God showed you hell? He said, 20. I said, how many you told? He said, not many. And he had a big hole in his throat for yet where he had had something done to him. And I said, sir, you're chicken. You want women to go out there with a big mouth and tell the truth, and you hide behind our skirt tails because you're chicken. I told him. I said, if God got my mouth, never has shut up from when God showed me because you got to tell the people where they make fun of you, laugh. You could, hey, you could have green hair, pink hair. Turn upside down, fat, skinny, tall, short. Somebody's going to find a problem with you. Just face it. Let's face it, man. And you've got to obey the Holy Spirit, no matter how silly it sounds. So this man wanted, I'm just telling him, wanted me to promote his book. I said, brother, I love you, but I'm not going to promote your book. I'm not going to do nothing because you need to open your mouth and tell what God showed you. He went in a coma, and he had this in his throat, and Jesus walked him in hell. And uh, he never told anybody, but he saw where he was going. If he didn't repent, he saw hell. Hell is a place that you don't want to go. It's in the middle of the earth, and there's nothing but cries of the dead and moans and groans and regrets of what they did with their life. Your whole life comes before you constantly, and you never sleep. The, there's, there's rats that are 70 pounds that come up and bite on you, I'm telling you. There's, there's things you do not want, demons of all sizes, all shape. Like Bill saw, Bill, we, one of them had three heads. And some of them have uh, like these big, big old Egyptian snakes with the fangs. Oh, yeah. And you do not want to uh, suffer in hell. We went night after night, and Christ, Jesus would come back at 2. And during the day, I called my pastor, my church, and uh, I wanted everybody saved. And one night, the Lord spoke to me. He said, we're going to go to a different section of hell. And we went back to where I was just telling you, those rocks and high above and down was a valley of burning souls. And he's looking down. He says, Catherine, those are all young people. I said, to what, Lord? He said, they're the youth. He said, they have, oh boy, done things. And he said, the world like the world. And they've been, Satan sets plans for the youth and tries to deceive them, which we all know. And, and I said, what can you do about it, Lord? And he began to cry again. He said, tell them, tell them the truth. Tell them what I have down here. Tell the people. So then he said, come, I want to show you something else. And I saw a river of fire about 10 foot wide with a chain in it, a black chain. And around it was skeletons, and they were screaming. And it pulled 80 miles an hour. And he said, some of the youth are in that. And he said, look, learn, and listen. And I looked, and they'd raise their bony hands up and scream. Why didn't somebody warn us? Why didn't somebody tell us about hell? And the scriptures would be written in the fire all through hell. And he said, lovers of their own flesh, men loving men, women loving women with no fear of God are his commandments that were written in the flames up and down, up and down. And even around their feet, that would be the major sin they did in, in big black letters burning in the fire. There's no escape. And then in the book of Revelations, and I was going to give you another scripture here on hell, 
But in the book of Revelations, we'll go there in chapter 21, you're going to find out that God, when he brings the final, when death and hell come up and stand in the galaxies to be judged, hell is a place you do not want to go. We, none of our family's children, we're going to repent and pray for them today. And they're not going to go there. God have mercy. We got to pray for mercy and forgiveness, baby doll. Do you know that when there's strife around, God trained me this way, strife, there is 250 demons loosed on it that time. That's why people get mad and angry, lose their jobs, get, get in fights and go to jail because all them things are attacking you when strife starts. Yeah, strife is wicked. It's very, that's what Jesus showed me now. Right now I can't, I'm not going to teach on it. But it's better you don't, st so much, you know, don't start no strife, okay? Because see, if you think about it, then everybody ends up fussing, fighting, <laughs> right? End up in jail, lose your job, all that crazy stuff. And there's nothing but the devil. He don't want us to get along. It's a devil. Chapter 21 of Revelations and this is uh, John the Revelator speaking. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, <clears throat> the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now, number four uh, is talking about when God wipes our tears away in heaven. Now, let's go down. I missed one of the verses. i got to read you that. I'm sorry. It was uh, chapter 20, okay, hallelujah, verse 11 and 12. And I saw the great white throne, hallelujah. Whoo, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, that set on it, glory to his name. For whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. Glory to God, and there was found no place for them. Now, Here's the dead. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Wow. That's when, you know, hell opens up and they're brought up. Do you know that? That's in the scriptures here. And the books were open. Now, what are the books they're talking about? The books of their life. They're not covered in the blood. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged. Out of these things was written in the books according to their works. Sweetheart, and the sea gave up the dead which was in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which was in them, and they were judged every man according to their word. They didn't, the last verse, 13, they did not have the blood of Jesus covering their books. The works they did, the evil works were never covered by the blood of the Lamb. They went to hell with those rotten works. If they had repented, God would have forgiven them. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. That's the second death. I saw the, the second death. I saw the lake of fire. Jesus took me there. And all of it was skeletons swimming and burning and screaming with no, nothing on. They would fall off cliffs in there with suits on and clothes like we got. And they would disintegrate and bob up a skeleton and swim to the edge and scream, let us out of here, let us out of here. And I said, Jesus pointed at me and asked me what I was going to do about it. What are you going to do about it, he said. I said, what can I do about it? It was so scary. There was no demons, no devils there. And he said, this is the lake of fire. And he, he said that in the scriptures in Matthew, uh, well, I wasn't prepared to preach on that. But death and hell is real. And we have to recognize what choice we want to make. Do we want Jesus Christ? Because he'll forgive you. He'll take the condemnation away. He'll take the, everything away that's tormenting you. But you have to listen to him. You have to obey him. And, and be um, conscious of, of things like when the Spirit of the Lord quits you. Don't do that. Just don't do it. You know, that's bad. That's the way I'm just telling you what he's saying. And it says, And the, whosoever was found, not found written, and the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This book of life that, I, that we saw was over 200, it was 200, uh, how high was it? 
to, it was so high, it was like 100, 100 miles high, the book of life. And big angels turn your pages and stuff. So if your name's not written down in there, that's what the Bible says. But over here in chapter 21, and I'm going to read you the verse. Um, oh, hallelujah. Seven. He that overcometh, that means overcome my rotten flesh, shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. And we overcome by the blood, and Christ wants us to overcome. You understand? He wants us. He wants that anointing to come and help us overcome everything that hinders us. Do you understand? Uh, overcome. Like, say somebody's on drugs, and you need help. And you get counsel and you get prayer. And you're clean for like six months and then you go out and your friends say, oh, come on, let's go take some drugs. You've got to stand and say, no, the blood of Jesus set me free. I'm overcoming this fleshful thing. Same thing with alcohol. Same thing with lust and perversion. God can give you the strength to overcome these things, sweetheart. But Jesus will help you. Jesus will guide you. Jesus will lift you up in your worst day he'll lift you up higher oh he'll give you peace and give you abundance of blessings he, he's promised and it says here but the fearful okay if it's not being afraid of God being fearful it, it is people that's ashamed of Jesus Christ you're ashamed to say I'm a born again Christian it's, this, they don't mean like being afraid of the dark here uh, it's not that kind of fear. And the unbelieving and the abominables and the murderers and the whoremongers and sorcerers and all idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So it's pretty severe, isn't it, God, what he wants. He wants us to turn to him, repent of our sins, shake off those heavy loads, and not go to a place of torment forever and ever and ever. We don't want that. I don't want to see anybody go to hell. I, I can't. And then they would put their bony hands together down there and cry and beg me to warn their families, warn my family. There's no escape. There's nowhere we can go. Father, we come to you today with our precious, precious families, Lord Jesus. Each one of them pray about your family to God, honey, in your own way. We lift up our precious families that's lost. We just ask your forgiveness, Daddy. Jesus Christ's name, send out your precious blood. Send out your words. Send out your hope. Send out to bring them unto you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Save our families. Send someone to them to minister to them. We forgive our families, Father. Let's forgive them. Everybody forgive your families. We're all the hateful, all the stuff. Lord God, we forgive them in Jesus Christ's name. Oh, Lord. Oh, my. Whoa, thank you, Jesus. Whoa, Jesus. Whoa. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, I've come to set the captive free. I've come to set you free today, saith the Lord. Well, for many of you, many of you have not given your whole heart to me, little ones. I've come with my anointing. Oh, my. And it's, the, the Lord is wanting us to uh, pray and remit, pray and, and uh, confess our sins to God right in your chairs. So, Father, we come to you today, each one of us, Daddy, and, and we come to you just as we are. And, Father, we truly come to you as your servant and your children and your, wow, wow, oh, Lord Jesus, oh, Bring holy sweet conviction on us, Daddy. Bring it on us. Correct us. Perfect us from level to level. From elevation to elevation. Correct us and perfect us, Father God. 
Oh, yes, I see the Lord lifting us up as we confess to him how we feel. Right there in your seats, confess to God whatever you want to tell him. And really mean it. And if you've sinned, repent of it. Father, we repent. In the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth, we mean it, Lord, for any sin or shortcoming or things we've done that's not pleasing to you or man, Lord. We repent in Jesus' name. Come and wash us. Cleanse us that precious blood, Lord Jesus. Wash over us, Father, as a, a people that want to know you and love you. Wow, in Jesus' name. Mm. Come, Lord Jesus. His love. He wants to baptize us in mercy and love. So, Lord, <clears throat> we ask you to baptize us in mercy and love this morning, Jesus. Whoa, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Whoa, I feel his presence. I feel this presence so different. Whew. We welcome you in, Lord Jesus. Wow, wow. Mm, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Woo. The Lord said he's going to show some of you his visions, flash visions of hell, like Pastor talked about. We're entering to a time of elevation is not... Nothing you've ever been in before. I believe if you clean up your lives, your heart, your souls, that God will use you in this hour. And a lot of you are ready. It's like an elevator. We go from floor to floor. And in the spirit, God wants to bring us up higher to show us vision, to show us revelations, to have uh, visitations of God, and to have dreams and hopes and that's what God wants, a purpose for us. Our future is in Jeremiah. I know my purpose and plans I have for you. And it's good that we clean ourselves up. You know, it's like taking a bath, isn't it, honey? <laughs> it is. It's like a refreshing. So this is, God is so wonderful, so simple, that once you have revelation knowledge and you want to read more and more, about us, what I'm talking about. You'll want to know more. It is a horrible thing. I mean, 30, 30 nights, three hours a night, I went down there. There's so much more to it. But I gave you some highlights and some truths that we have families out there that need to be saved. You know, we have to love them and forgive them. I mean, you got to. I know. I know. You got to forgive them, God says. It's a key. There's a key. Did you know that? How many of you have been real mad at your families? Be honest now. Raise them hand. Be honest. Okay. Can, can you find it just to pray in your heart and ask, tell God you forgive them? You got to. That's a trick of the enemy, you see. He wants to stir them up so you get mad. You know, you know what I mean, sister. You know. I know you know. And, 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 and then you got to turn around and... and uh, Oh, Jesus. We have a prodigal son that just came home. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. And Dexter, Dexter, my son over there, he prays for him and loves him. And we all have families. You see, the devil does these things. In hell, he planned to send demons up here to attack our families. But the blood of Jesus stops him. The blood of Christ aboards it but you got to be in a position with God where you will say okay God I've really goofed today forgive me before I even pray please listen to me because there's like Bryce up see how these things are in the ceiling when you're full of the devil and you try to pray that's not goes that high comes right back down on your heads and you can't have hatred towards anybody not one bit of hatred but you can have wisdom and you can have judgment and you can understand, right, guys? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's simple once you recognize the, the format of what God wants. He wants us to stay humble. He wants us to stay uh, flexible. He wants us to understand, have you ever walked a mile in their shoes? Have you ever walked a mile in their shoes? How do you know where, the, what, where they've been, what they've been through? You can't prejudge. That's what he told me. 
you love them and I'll do the judging. Yeah. And you don't know. Some of these kids, I'm telling you, been raped and been battered and been hurt bad. And they're running like a wild animal. They don't know where to go, guys. They don't know who to trust anymore. And you got to stop and think when you were young and when you were a brat and when you stunk. Are you listening to me? Remember when you was mean? Yeah, you do. You remember when God kept trying to get you and change your diapers? Say amen. You all were stinkers. You all were little stinkers. Every one of us was full of the devil. But God came and set us free. We don't have to, we don't have to fear the devil anymore. But I'm trying to tell you, that's the open doors. It's your hatred, your, your malice, your mean. If you get that way, please stop. Say, God, help me, man. I'm, don't we, honey? We have to. Because who are we? You know, we wouldn't even be where we're at if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. Forgiving us for what we've done. Yeah, so I hope that helps you. And we're not the judge. God is. We counsel. We love them. We pray for them. But you can't make one human being do what you want it to do. <laughs> How many's tried? Raise your hands. Yeah. My boys used to come home. They had been partying at the bar, you know. So I said, okay. They said, man, at a bar fight. And I had this big living room, you know. And one of them said, oh, mother, don't turn the light on. I said, I'll make you think turn the light on. So I turned the light on. I had bruises and blood. And I went in the kitchen got a big gallon of olive oil. And I began to prophesy, you shall live and not die and declare the word of the Lord. They were slipping and sliding off those couches. And they said, boy, we ain't going to tell you. And we come in from a bar fight anymore. I said, I'll make you think a bar fight. And they, they grew up like that. They grew up like that. That prodigal son had just come back. He said, Mom, I remember you'd pour oil all over me. And, uh, and uh, one time, he had daddy, his dad's car was a Thunderbird, a big Thunderbird. And he was driving around his permission. He was 18. And he, he was a big, he's a big boy. And he comes home. He said, well, Mama, I had the strength for Sam, like Samson. I said, what would you do? <laughs> he said, well, Daddy comes from the Space Center home. And I had this car without permission, and it, it broke down the middle of the road. So I looked up to God and said, give me strength like Samson, God, to move his car. So he picked up the front of the Thunderbird and put it over in the woods. He, he did it. I was praying and prophesied to it, praying the belly didn't fall open and all that, you know. I said, you crazy thing, you. He said, well, Mama, you said strength had Samson to lift anything. I said, oh, my God crazy and one time one of them run off a cliff he was rebe- same one on in a motorcycle no no he was on a uh, the residence in detroit he got mad at me so he decided to jump off and kill himself okay you guys i know what i'm talking about so so uh his grandma told me he's scared to tell me he went off in the air and this angel grabbed him by the neck and shirt and said son you look down there if I let you go, you'll go to hell. And said, your mother's preaching the gospel, and I'm, I'm assigned to watch over you. So he sets him, wait a minute, wait a minute. Tell you. He sets it, let me tell you, let me tell you what happened. He said, he, he said, he said, he set me gently back on the top of the roof. The residence, the highest building down in Detroit. Residence Center. Am I saying it right? Marsha, am I saying it right? Resa. So the next time he got madder yet, because he, uh, he was drunk. And he got real mad, said, I took a flying leap way out there and said, the angel grabbed me again. This time he put his fist back and knocked me out. Knocked him, knocked him on the top of the roof. He slept, I think, 12 hours. He didn't wake up till the next day. He was sober, boy. You talk about bratty kids. One of them run away and on a sea cow in the, in the, down in the river. We had to get the police to get a bullhorn to get him out. Scott Baxter, come back off that sea cow, and he jumped into water. Your kids will do things to make you have gray hairs, you know. <laughs> Won't they? <laughs> but God's helped us many, many times. We just love them and try to correct them, but they got to learn their own way, you know. So we're happy. So you guys feel better? I haven't left you in hell now. <laughs> you feel better? <laughs> 